with that, we're going to move on to another very, very exciting game that's going on this weekend. Uh, the Pacific Celebration, as they've put it, uh, continues, and it is sort of the, the showpiece event of the best two the best two teams in that area, yeah. Oceania. Um, the All Blacks against Fiji. Um, class, new, the All Blacks, the best team in, in, in rugby historically, and Fiji, arguably the most entertaining in yeah. rugby yeah. historically. Yeah. Olympic so champions in sevens, yeah. Fiji, love it. Um, yeah, no, that's going to be at Forsyth Bar this Saturday, the 10th. Uh, kickoff, that's 8.05 in the morning, our time. Yeah. Um, so some other time over there, probably 7.05 in the evening, if I'm remembering that correctly. Yeah. But uh, yeah, referee Nick Berry from Australia, an all Oz um, kind of match official team. He has Damon Murphy and Graham Cooper on the sidelines with James Lickey in uh, the TMO. So uh, yeah, the Aussies are going to be watching these uh, these All Blacks and Fijians throwing the ball about. Um, it's Yeah, it's going to be a fantastic spectacle. I'm almost certain that uh, this Fiji side will provide stiffer opposition than the Tongans did. Um, <laughs> no in question. Fact, I am 100% certain of that because we've seen the team and it's actually a bloody good one. Fiji yeah. just, yeah, like... Uh, unless the, the most ridiculous thing could happen they're always going to have good players Fiji just produce great great rugby players and this squad are kind of waiting in the grass Vern, Co- Vern Cotter has, has done a great job with this Fiji side over the last few years and really got them yeah he's come in and it. yeah it's it's, exi- it's it's exciting I mean I, I, I think now that they've got uh, now that they've got these uh, these class coaching tickets together they've got quite a settled team yeah, Fiji and Drua um, coming into the super rugby picture as well yeah, Fiji, Fiji, Fiji as well, yeah. kind of on the up in terms of just you know the mo the the, the kind of zeitgeist humor of it more so than Tonga anyway which was there was all kinds of talk about this it's not fair this it's not fair that no such talk about this one this is a great great series a great way for the All Blacks to get their hit out to, in, in advance the rugby championship great opportunity for Fiji likewise to play against the mighty All Blacks I think it's going to be a really really good spectacle of rugby as much as a festival of Ireland or rugby I think it's going to be just a great spectacle because just the way these two sides play yeah they, it's like impossible not to like it's almost it's impossible for these two to play a non-entertaining game it's true it's true um yeah like for, like you were saying Vern Cotter's come in now after the World Cup um, he's brought in the likes of um, a, cr- a couple of Crusaders forwards guys. Uh, Jason Ryan has come in. Daryl Gibson has come in. Yeah. Um, they've got like a, a decent brains trust around them. Um, but still, there there is the issue surrounding Fiji that they've only played one test since 2019, which was last uh, autumn against Georgia. Um, and like Tonga, they have had major hurdles assembling all their best players. They've obviously missed some guys who are off trying to make the seven circuit. Ren Raj was off right. trying to get an Olympic gold, so good on him. Good on him, fair play. Um, yeah, fair yeah. play to him. And then obviously they've had issues with COVID, so they haven't been able to play much domestic footy over the last while. Yeah. Um, likewise, they had issues um, with a couple of guys stranded. Um, I believe Frank Lamani, their main starting scrum half, right. he's stranded off in Australia, so they're without him. Mm-hmm. Um, so there there are some some hurdles in front of Fiji, but all in all, they're they're not too bad. They're pretty settled. Yeah. Um, for the All Blacks. Last week they were awesome. I have one hundred and two points. I don't care who it's against. That's fab. That's fabulous stuff. And yeah, they just true. look. They want that number one spot back. They want it back now. They want it really bad. And I think they they're. I yesterday. think they're coming for it. And I think this is a good opportunity. It's a good stepping stone for them as they build towards Bledisloe and then the Rugby Championship. Yeah. Um. I think this is a, a perfect little adjustment stepping stone. Fiji will be good. They'll test their defense. They will. But this is a chance for them just to establish some rhythms and and, and basically keep that momentum going because they look a confident, classy team at the moment. It's true. It's true. Um, yeah, and they've named a pretty pretty exciting uh, team to start this one as well. Like completely changed from last week, which is all also good. But uh, yeah, will I will I rattle through it? I guess I can rattle through it if yeah. you want. Um, we've got George Bauer, who's in obviously having made his debut last week. Seven years ago, I believe he was a hair cutter, uh, hairdresser, or something. That's right. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, one the, of these ones with the mad story. Made his debut um, last week against Tonga, twenty nine years old, Crusaders <laughs> prop, where he had been. Yeah, that, that was a good, good he's, little he's, off piece. He's, he's taken the um the 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 starting berth in Crusaders, and now he's into the All Blacks team, which is exciting for him. Cody Taylor, Napo Lalala make up the front row. They got Tui Pilato and Brody Retallick in the locks. Uh, oh, that's probably their first choice. I haven't pairing. seen that one yet. White lock cover oh, on the bench. It's gonna be awesome. Um, they've got Frizzell, uh, who's awesome in the loose Ethan Blackadder Tigerish yeah. player Hoskins Satutu at 8 and then their back line is, is absolutely stunning I mean in my in my book you know there's been a lot of different hype trains about various different players in, in both 9 and 10 shirts but in my book there's no better 
halfback pairing than Aaron Smith and Bowden Barrett. Yeah. I don't think anyone touches them. I think their speed so and good. sharpness of the pair of them yeah. is extremely exciting. And I'm just I'm delighted to see them playing together again. And I think it's going to be very, very, very interesting. Yeah. Um, at centre, they have the the, the prodigal been, centre partnership for the, the the one that we're all hoping. Well, from an All Black point of view, can they can stick to and that can work is David Avili and Rico Ioani. The form twelve and thirteen. Can they get this area right? Yeah. If these guys go well, I think they'll have the jersey for the next year or so. Anyway, they'll yeah. be incumbent possibly, setting into World Cup year. Five years time, like yeah. they, like the distribution from both of them, the passing from both of them, the running from the just the out and out speed. They're both converted from the back three, so they're just so quick as yeah. well. Like um, yeah, that could be a really really exciting center partnership in an area that, as we've cited, they have struggled to kind of decide what they're really doing there for quite a while there's, there's a lot of talk goes about the Barrett Moong axes and stuff but they haven't really figured out their centres and we, if this goes well this could be nail meeting head you know yeah and like right there 100% in the back three they've gone with in the absence of Caleb Clark who's still injured they've gone with George Bridge and Sever Reese, that Crusaders partnership that's so good on the wings and um, they could be the incumbents yeah. for the year really classy players and then Jordy Barrett gets his chance to, to nail down a marker on the 15 jersey uh, with Mackenzie left on the bench, the bench itself. Dane Coles to come in. Ethan De Groot from the Highlanders covering loose head. Tyrell Lomax covering tight head. Whitelock covering lock. Luke Jacobson covering the back row. Finley Christie gets another chance at scrum half and he'll, he'll come on. And then the very cruel seeming Damien McKenzie and Will Jordan oh, both to oh, emerge as well. When, so when, when you're just, getting a little tired, those yeah. two coming in look hungry for tries. Um, yeah. Is that. there is there some concern about the prop stocks in New Zealand? Just a smidge. Yeah, like when you compare it to every other position, just when you where there's just to phenomenal else. depth yeah. and quality, and then you have like a guy who's a hairdresser. I mean, no disrespect to George Barry's class, Nepal Ala is very good as well. But I'd like certainly when compared to say Kitsoff, Marks, and Malherbe. Yes. It doesn't quite look. Doesn't quite have the same ferocity to it as a front row. They'll have to when the Bok game comes at the end of all of at the end of all of this Lions talk. There's going to be a game of games between the All Blacks and the Box come season's end. Yeah. And when that game comes around, that's the one area, the one chink in the All Blacks armor at the moment. Yeah. Is that their front I row is mm, yeah. and untested as well. Yeah. A lot, as a good as the hookers load, are. A whole yeah. load of domestic rugby where the Kiwis will just. Willingly just go through the scrum without yeah, really no, being just that aggressive. The just yeah, with, yeah. No, well, both sets of props will just kind of shake hands before the game and be like, "We'll just lock it down. Yeah. We'll just lock it down and get it out the back. It's fine. It's yeah. fine. There's no like spring box in the mud. They're trying to absolutely turf you, either rip you for like hoist you in the air like a flag, or smush you into the mud. Yeah, you know, either of those things yeah. would be fine to a spring box. E- even prop. even Tupo might be waiting. Well, even Tupo, Tupo, Tupo. especially yeah. might be waiting in the long grass for these uh, yeah. all black. Uh, That's true. Prop but outside of that the, the yeah, talent in this team is just that is, that is like a small caveat to attach to what is otherwise a very 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 dangerous team yeah um, and by contrast to uh, well not even contrast uh, Fiji named their team also and a pretty good one it is very a few familiar faces we have uh, Rituva um, Matavesi and what is his name Doge, Doge? It's, it's the same um, um, it's the same forward pack my, with, with just the addition of Leone Nakarawa yes. it's the same for, forward pack that went to the Nations Cup and played against Georgia That's so they're right. actually for all of the talk of disjointedness they're, they're pretty a pretty jointed. together squad yeah, yeah. from Vern Cotter like they know what they're doing they have and like it goes back to that, that game of games that they beat the French in, in France and it was built on defence that was a while ago yeah. as well but a lot of these charges were involved in that too so there's a lot of a lot of good stuff yeah, that, that was Kunavula's breakout game I believe and he's yeah. in there at 7 Tuisui at 8 Johnny Dyer at 6 yeah, um, yeah Maya Navanua <laughs> Maya Navanua and he's been in there he's been in there for a while himself but um, I'm a little concerned personally about Leone Nakarawa yeah. he came in he returned to Glasgow earlier in the year and was out of shape and just sad looking yeah. and then he has been his transfer to Ulster has been cancelled because he didn't pass a medical yeah. and I mean like he just looks out of shape and a little kind of jaded I think and passed it a little bit and he's only still over there because he needs to make the money and yeah. it's just kind of yeah it's it's it, for one of the most entertaining players of the last decade it's kind of looking like a petering out end to a career mm-hmm. and certainly we don't need dialed out no good Nakarawa to rock up and place Brody Retallick like fresh that, back that can't happen you have yeah, to yeah. be 110% to take on these guys and yeah. I don't know if Nakarawa is so yeah, it definitely so feels like he's been thrown in there yeah well yeah. he's been he's been such a stalwart for, him, for them for so long but I agree with 
with you yes, this yeah. year has not been uh, has not been good for him and he hasn't looked himself. Um, just to go through the back line, we have Curry Valu or Curry Volley. Curry Volley going in for Lamani. Um, and yeah, he's, just two, he's just had two starts. Um, yeah, that's a bit of inexperience at nine, yeah. but uh, he is partnering Ben Volavola, the ever present, one of the best dead. Uh, out halves you'll see in a tier two side at all. He's absolutely yeah. fantastic. And then the familiar sight of Nadolo on one wing with uh, was it uh, who is it? Ironi Sao. Sao on the other wing. Unbelievable. And Murray Murray Valo at fullback with the familiar Botia at twelve and Naya Kalevu at thirteen in the yeah. absence of Radradra who as you said is hunting Olympic gold so yeah. he is he's, a, he's with the sevens the absence but, of Tudisova um, as well which is obviously yeah. a weakness those are really two of their main men yeah. Aroni Sow is a funny one from, from Edinburgh like he, he's, he's definitely good. he has his moments but um, yeah it's probably it's probably not as explosive as they can be well, in the back certainly three. not as explosive as like Red Radra or Tudisova you chuck yeah. them into any team and they're instantly more explosive it's true they're three uh, British based Fijians in the, in the back three which is not not ideal I wouldn't have thought no. but Nadolo is still explosive and they still have you know potential to burn um, mm-hmm. there's no question that being said the premiership this year was played at quite a Fijian pace it was, it was, all, it was, it was basketball that's, that's scores true. high that's, scores and good good rugby that's entirely fair that yeah. is entirely fair that's definitely true mm-hmm. and they have a bit of explosivity to come on off the bench as well in Perselli Yato and awesome uh, player. Mattaelli who's mm-hmm. the back three player I would have played for a breakout season with the Crusaders this yeah. year very very fine winger Looking forward to seeing Matteelli get a run out. It's but, nice um, to see them have some some depth to spring off the bench, even yeah. in the absence of some of those guys we mentioned. But uh, but then it's not surprising because always, always, always Fiji have really good rugby players yeah, to bring to a rugby game. Um, um, so yeah, looking at the game from the point of view of, of each side, starting just with the All Blacks. I mean, they looked stunningly good in the first game of the year, and they're building towards the World Cup glory after a, ro- a ropey season last year. I remember Ian Foster talking about um, you know working on at the beginning of the season working on skills and discipline skills and discipline skills and discipline so yeah. it'll be interesting to see how much that sort of message has been hammed home and yeah. how, how much they're going to show off their skills up against one of the most skilled size, sides in rugby um, I mean there's so much talent in the squad it's kind of scary if they can yeah. get into any kind of rhythm any kind of flow they'll be just impossible to stop the speed and precision of, of the passing and running game of these guys is, yeah. is, is, is another and level then, and then the calibre of guys that they're going to spring off the bench and the hunger of all of them to retain their jerseys yeah. in time for that rugby championship like how much yeah, pressure yeah. are the likes of even Bowden Barrett like if yeah. Bowden Barrett goes badly he's under massive pressure because then you're going Moonga and Mackenzie please yeah. and likewise for Mackenzie coming off the bench likewise for, for Barrett starting yeah. Jordy Barrett I should say like that the, the pressure on these guys who are extraordinary players is yeah. incredible yeah it's, it's exactly what fuels this all black rugby that we love seeing and furious tempo is what we're going to see from them it's, and yeah, if they can set a rhythm at all it'll be very tough for what is a very game very able much improved Fiji defence and yep. the guys like Body are very very good defenders but if the all blacks are able to set their rhythm and able to get on top of the breakdown on top of the set piece a little bit yeah. and then just set a rhythm yeah then it could get ugly very quickly yeah, for, I mean, for they, have, they have multiple ways they could go about it they could try and shake up the Fijians physically if they if they think Nakarau is not at the right kind of frame of mind sending yeah. Tui Pilatu down his channel and getting on top yeah. of him that way and his that channel. is a way no, of doing that, it yeah. um, we know how good they are on transition on turnover ball on kick return but it'll be curious to see how much they can get off in the multi-phase first phase and multi-phase are they going to expand their game to the point where they have like strike plays that are more that are more polished than what they have had in seasons gone by and to what extent is the centre partnership going to work are they going to be able to break down a defence from slow ball in a multi-phase way or are they going to, you know, kick it if things don't go their way, as they did last year? You know, they, yeah. they, they, as much as the, like the Aotearoa has given a good feeling, Super Rugby Trans Trasman has given a good feeling, the hundred and two ta- uh, point Tonking has given them a good feeling. Yeah, they still have the cloud of, of a dodgy season last year. As they much did. as they won that Tri Nations, they did. It's, they, it's still yeah. a dodgy season because yeah. they lost a couple of games, they drew a game. You know, yeah, they weren't themselves. Not, that's not what they, they want. They want unbeaten seasons. That's what they. That's what their bar is. Yeah. It's up there at the you know never lose a game kind of yeah, that's, that's where they want to be well, they, they um, never lost to Argentina until last year and, and it was a tough game for them like it, mm. were, they were just defended and they weren't able to break down that defence and yeah. that's a real that's like something to be looking for a Fiji or game on defence and they're not shying away from the contact 
can the All Blacks break them yeah. down? Because we've seen from Fiji, like again, citing that France game, that was yeah. a, a very dangerous French team as well that Fiji it just was. defended for, for 80 minutes and they were game for it, hungry for it throughout and managed to squeak a, a, a win in a low-scoring game in France. Yeah. If they, they can, they'd be more than happy to do that. If, if they won the game 3-0, they'd bite your hand off for it. <laughs> of course. But, uh, don't think they will. Don't think yeah. they will. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, defensive cohesion is something that Vern Cotter seems to have instilled in his side. They were good in that area in the Autumn Nations Cup, even in the one game that we did see from them is yeah. in that as well um, yeah there's a lot a lot to to admire about them just in terms of for a tier 2 side for an Islander side they have have shown more defensive organisation in the last 18 maybe 24 months than you would see from any of them throughout history I think it's yeah. probably the, the best coached defence of all, any Pacific Islander team I've ever seen yeah no, um, there's, no, there's no doubt about that I definitely agree with you I think yeah. they, they're they're in fine fettle and they, their technical tackling is great as well so mm-hmm. that will prove a proper challenge for the All Blacks and on defence and set piece as well it'll be curious to see if the All Blacks can get on top of the Fijians and attack them in those areas and take the game away from them or will they sort of allow it to be a blow for blow our offence against yeah, your offence we'll shoot do out celebration yeah. of Islander Rook kind yeah of exactly idea. the All Blacks might bat themselves in that mm. department but that is a way in for Fiji yes um, as far as Fiji are concerned you know I think you know all of this talk about how disrupted the Islander Rugby is and how Tonga last week and yeah, there's people have been trying to sort of add a story about Fiji on top of the Tongan story and you know they have had their COVID issues they've had certain issues but I kind of think they're waiting in the tall grass if not for the All Blacks then for somebody because yeah. I think they're as you pointed out they're building nicely they have a very settled squad um, and they could you know if they have confidence in their own abil- ability they, they can certainly get some plays yeah, well, off and they can certainly it. disrupt the All Blacks for, start, a, for they, a time they have the calibre to yeah. do it against any team that's what we always say with Fiji it's like it's it's a few a few things that are keep a few kind of resource based things that are keeping them from, from really being a tier one side keeping them down in that way but when you look at the calibre of their player in position mm-hmm. and position like they have the talent they are of a tier one cal- every player there is a Top level in player in terms top, of skill, top level in terms professional of, pl- yeah. player, and their role in the club that they're in. They're all in different clubs, but invariably in their club, they're the star player or the yeah. token guy who's going to unpick a defense, the guy you can trust to do something fantastic to get your offense going. Yeah, and um, they're all guys like that. So it's like there's no reason for them to not sp- come together and be cohesive and be a really good force, especially in World Cups. But this isn't one. This is them out of camp. As you say, they do have some issues with COVID. Not everyone's available. The man. He's stuck in Australia and all this. I expect a little bit of disjointedness that will probably lead to the All Blacks maybe taking the game away from them in this instance yeah. because of that. Uh, that doesn't doesn't uh, vindicate that kind of sensationalist story you're talking about where there's crisis this, crisis that. I think actually Fiji will show something in this game. I, th- I hope they manage to stick a few passes, find a nice try, which they're usually good for. Oh, they but will. I'd also like to see some good defensive hustle. That's yeah. really what I admire about this iteration of Fiji, as I was saying, over the last two years. I think they're just, they're, they're reborn in terms of their their intent and their organisation on D. Yeah. And I would love to see them stymie some All Blacks. <laughs> like we've, we've seen the All Blacks play 80 minutes. I don't think any of their offensive drives were repelled. They no. scored 102 <laughs> yeah. points with no opposition. They yeah. scored three tries in the first six minutes. Yeah, so true. maybe, you know, Botty will get over one of those breakdowns and get a steal. Yeah, exactly. Um, and exactly. then it's game on. <laughs> and, and on offense as well. You know, listen, yeah. the, the, the All Black center partnership is a little new. It's brand new mm-hmm. and it, it potentially is brittle in terms of its confidence levels. And if Botty can sit one of them down, yeah. get on top, like they have a lot of hard, powerful runners. So if they they like for generating first phase momentum shouldn't yeah. be difficult with a bit of deception, trusting Volavola to Volavola or the young scrummy to make the right pass. Yeah. Um, but then you can have any one of Nyakalevu, uh, Botia or Nadolo picking yeah. a hard line in that midfield, sitting down the defence. If you can get around the corner and be quick, you have a real chance to test the edge. And then yeah. as you say, as you rightly point out, the quality is there all over. From yeah. Kunavula, Ravai, and Lucid, like they can all play and they can all find the right passes. And if they can just uh, get that like sec- second and third phase rhythm them going after sitting down the yeah. All Blacks have a little bit of a plan high. like have a yeah, shape yeah. and a plan to do that first phase this second phase strike over here on third phase yeah. if even a simple rudimentary three phase strike play like that if they can yeah, execute they have the quality, well, they have the they quality have the to quality. sit the guys yeah. down to get the passes going and to find the tries it would be lovely lovely to see some of those yeah. moments come nobody right throws, throws offloads and runs tracking lines quite as well as these boys in their yeah. pumps so that, that much is true 
I think you're right to point out the importance of defence and I would add to that discipline. I think yeah. discipline is huge, especially in this game because both of these teams, including the All Blacks, have a capacity to, to, to allow penalties to snowball and to give away tilted penalties they when do. flapped. Yeah, and yeah. We, we said just when on. defending. If, if you keep yeah. them in their 22 for a few minutes, the All Blacks will give yeah, up Yeah, exactly. Penalty. Even 30 seconds, they'll give up a penalty. Yeah, like, and, um, and we said earlier on, um, like one of the only avenues for a Tier 2 team to pull off an upset is to dominate the penalty count, and that much is definitely true of this game. And yeah. you can see it going either way. If Fiji get on top, the All Blacks are sat down and they're a little annoyed and the ball is too quick for them to deal with, mm. they'll just put a hand in there, they'll yeah. give away penalties, they'll be silly. But if Fiji are just a little off the pace, they'll jump out of the line, they'll hit high tackles, yeah. they'll be loose, oh, and then they'll yeah, know what penalties. you don't need is body a yellow yeah. or red card straight away. Too they high to be in the sharp. tackle. They have you know? to be yeah, sharp, yeah. you know? Yeah. That much is crucial. Yeah. You yeah. know, it, it's true, and discipline is so, so vitally sure. You saw the example is that the, the second half in that Georgia game, South Africa, Georgia, where it was just yeah. penalty, penalty, penalty. They're, we're a little tired, we're beaten, so every phase a penalty, every yeah. penalty a line out, every <laughs> line out a try. Yeah. And then we we restart with a penalty and yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah like that, that can that can definitely go go it can snowball very easily if Fiji yeah. if Fiji do end up picking up a card for a reckless shot or picking up a sustained pressure card tilted no more penalties all of that will just like the, the All Blacks will eat that up no so question. yeah no, they, they have to be calm have to have a, a, a good cohesive plan to disrupt uh, be re- be ready to take their chances on offense, which we know they are. Th- those are the instincts that I wouldn't fear for them. Co- defensive cohesion, organization, a bit of calm. Yeah, a bit of calm is such a, such a coveted thing when you're a t- an un- underdog team away from home against the mighty All Blacks. It's tough to be calm. It's easy to get panicked. Easy to get flapped. I'm sure they'll be given plenty of chances to get tilted or get flapped yeah. in this game. It's not going to go their w- their way for large periods I'm saying the All Blacks will have at least one purple patch yes, you know you need to probably. be ready for that eventuality you and do. not be tilted no uh, indeed so. keep, keep playing your game keep yeah. the ball when you need to you've got some big boots in there in Nadolo yeah. and Vola 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 will have um, to lead that especially without Lomani on the pitch now, even, even Nadolo though he yeah. has some bombs at him he there does. was a time when he was the only man in the Fiji jersey you could kick, kick and he, he was taking kick, place kicks kick, kick, number 11 on his back that's right yeah 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 no it'd be nice to see them just play a smart game and who knows colour coached Fiji you know, if, if if they're dialed in, if they're motivated, and if you see the little nuggets of Vern Cotter in them, you know, we could be in for a game here. Yeah. But if, if any if, if any of that isn't at fever pitch exactly where it needs to be, then we won't have a game at yeah. all because and the All Blacks probably, are that good. You'll probably know that within the first, like, minute and a half. Yeah. You'll probably no, there's, no, like there's nothing like it. Mid- there's nothing like Fijians for that. You're right. <laughs> they like... You can. They have no poker face. You can just tell instantly what mood they're in. Yes, and, and, and therefore how the, game, yeah. how the game will go. Yeah. Like if you see them game. If you see the first thing that happens is like Brody takes it and goes down and gets smushed. Then yeah. it's like ooh, game yeah, exactly. on. Exactly. But on the other hand, if three Fijians flounder and don't yeah. stick the tackle, and or the first kick is a kick of out a restart full, is all out in the full. Out in the full those are the kind scrum. of things yeah, yeah, that just they have such a tell yeah. when they're not in when they're not dialed in, and that'll be crucial. It'll yeah. be you're so, very curious to see that the first few minutes. Yeah. Yeah, How do they you pay attention to the first 30 seconds, two minutes, to 30 to two minutes of, uh, of match time and you'll probably know pretty pretty well how it's going to go. Yeah. So with that said, how's it going to go? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, the All Black team is phenomenal on paper. It's yeah. it's too good on paper. As, as good as the Fijian team is, I, I do foresee a little bit of, you know, a, a little bit of a challenge. I think there'll be something for the All Blacks to figure out. As sharp as they were, they're not going to get four tries in eight minutes. They're not, I don't think they're going to get close to that. I think Fiji will start well. Mm-hmm. A bit like Samoa did against the Maori. I would say it'll be like that kind of a game. 35-20. Like, yeah, to a higher level. Maybe they'll end up padding the score even more than that. Just yeah. because they're that, if the All Blacks are sharp, they might pad it a little more than that. But 50, somewhere 25. around there. Something like that, yeah. fifty to twenty, something like yeah. that. I think if the All Blacks are sharp, they'll they'll end up with scores in the second half, especially yeah. with the likes of White Lock coming on, Luke Jacobson coming on. Yeah. Like that could be telling. And Dame, to, Dame, to say nothing of D Mac and Will Jordan. Yeah, uh, the back line. Jordan, yeah, 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 yeah. Tries, tries yeah. coming off the bench. No yeah. question about it. So from that point of view, I think Fiji likely will struggle. I do think I expect both sides to get stuff off, um, but I do think Fiji will keep it interesting for a time anyway. Yeah, but All Blacks to win by twenty plus. Yeah, I would. I would say about the same. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I'm hoping to take the under on it. I would love a tight game. I still Wouldn't think just, the All Blacks yeah. will win it. But uh, you know, I'm I'm just excited to see Fiji. First time we're going to see Fiji in 2021. Second time we're going to see the All Blacks. First time against some opposition, I guess. So it's it's <laughs> it's definitely exciting. They're two of my favorite teams in world rugby and international rugby. They both play just an an, an un like just 
beautiful brands of rugby to pair them. <laughs> so there's just no way this won't be a good show of rugby. It just it just has to be. Yeah, of course, of <laughs> course. Yeah, that'll be a fun one. And Thanks for watching the Overlap Rugby podcast. If you enjoyed that video, please be sure to like and subscribe. And hey, if you have an opinion of your own, if you disagree with what we're saying, leave a comment down below. We might just get back to you.